Something ain't right. Hold on. <coughs> Yo! Oh! New shirt. Who dis? Oh! Yo! Big shout out to one of my good friends for making this. Sending it in the mail. Jan Doe, shout out to you. Um, this is clean. And I had to add the chain too. Uh, this was on sales at Claire's last week, so I had to scoop. You know what I'm saying? Do I regret shopping at Claire's? No, because as we all know, fashion hurts, even if it is just the ego. Wow, with the little with the little graphic and everything. Um, so big shout out, thank you for the shirt. Huge came in just in time because this one. Um, trying to figure out what the yellow stains were starting to come from. I had not washed it since I, since the inception of this channel because I was scared that the shark was going to run through the shirt and also run through my other clothes. So it's a, um, I think what I'll do is auction this off. Actually, here's a, here's a, here's an idea. Any one of you guys who can guess my social security number first in the comments, um, you'll get this shirt. And it's just as endearing as like when an NBA player gives you his game jersey off of his back when it's all nasty and sweaty. I don't know if I would want that, but I mean, people are ecstatic about it. So this is same, same, right? Okay. But it would not be right if I did not give a shout out for real. Um, go to Etsy.com and we're going to try to support Doga Designs Shop. Yoga from, comes from the combination of the words yoga and dogs. So I'll put the link right here. And the other sponsor to this video. So my viewers have spoken, not in, not outright have spoken and DM'd me, but by way of YouTube analytics, my viewers have spoken. And it's become crystal clear to me that it's imperative that I have to shorten these videos because all of my Gen Z, my fellow Gen Z, social media induced ADHD has caused us to not be able to concentrate on some boring ass topic, my videos, for longer than what it seems here on average, about two minutes. Two minutes. So I think I've already surpassed that today. So hopefully if you're still here, I thank you. What I'm going to do from now on is not go in depth of every single chapter. You're not going to remember that. I don't remember that. I have to take notes to do these videos. These are my notes for today. That's it. I already have six pages on the new Jim Crow. Too much. That's going to be a two, a 24 hour video. And I would even get bored of that. So my viewers, I feel for you and I am catering to you. You know, YouTube analytics, I promise you, I'm not obsessing over it. I promise you. No, see, I get my dopamine from real life sources, sources that actually matter. So instead of my YouTube analytics, I look for my dopamine source in my Instagram likes, how many views I had on my story, how many people responded with an LMAO or a rafflecopter in my DMs to a meme that I sent them, to a dank meme that I sent them. So the moment we've all been waiting for, what book is on the hot seat today? And that, my friends, is The Master Algorithm by Pedro Domingo. I lowered it to cover the logo here for my thumbnail so you wouldn't see it before you watch the video. Oh! Hashtag influencer. Oh. Okay, The Master Algorithm. This is a topic near and dear to my heart because this is essentially what I studied in school for six, uh, we'll say two years, we'll say the last two years. And this is what I kind of do for a living. Now, this is more academic than what I do. I'm a practical man, of course. But these algorithms are important. And the idea behind this book is very important. So what is this book about? This book is about machine learning. What in the hell is machine learning? I'm going to keep it simple because, honestly, most of this book waste was a waste of my time because I already knew these algorithms. The new part is that he's going to piece all these algorithms together. But for my viewers, it's a waste of your time because you don't give half of a rat's ass about this kind of stuff anyway. So let me cut to the chase. Today's administrative portion of the video was a little bit more long-winded than usual. And that's because I had to prime you with some comedy before I really get to the Mueller 
Bueller type boring stuff that we're about to dive into. So please take an intermission, take a shot of Red Bull or a five hour energy, pause the video and then come back in about a half second. Intro to ML. There are two problems that machine learning, for the most part, for the vast majority, address. There's a regression problem and a classification problem. Regression is when you're trying to predict a continuous output. That means like a number. So housing price, um, probability to vote, for example. Like these are going to be actual real numbers with decimals and everything. Remember that kind of stuff? The other side is the classification problem where you're trying to predict categorical variables. What are categorical variables? They come not in the form of continuous numbers, but like but answering questions. So you can say, what category does this fit in? Is this news article a sports article, a politics article, et cetera, et cetera? Or another one, the simplest, is the binary classification where you have two classes, yes or no. Is this email spam or is it not spam? Another example that might resonate with those avid astrology people who I, say, who I see share um, their daily horoscope every day on their Instagram story, you can take into account as your data input all of the different positions in the history of the universe that the galaxies were in, how that affected the gravity and the dark matter, and perhaps how that is being ingested by your atoms at the time of your birth. So maybe let's say in the year of our Lord, 1995, on July 29th, was the one time when the Big Dipper constellation was actually dipping into the Artichoke Ranch Dip constellation. And so then every year on the 29th, my energy just feels weird. I just feel like, I don't know, I feel, I feel a new vibe. The output from that model taking into account the location of all those stars over time now the output is going to be today, what is my energy level going to be today? I wonder. That would be a regression problem. Is it going to be at a 1? Is it going to be at a 2? Is it going to be at a 3? <laughs> Let's not get crazy, people. Today will be your day. Just keep your chin down, eyes forward. Whatever happens is supposed to happen. Everybody that stays in your life is supposed to stay there. So typically in traditional software, the computer scientist or the programmer, the software engineer, will code the rules and then get some kind of output. So let's say I have this data. It'll go through these rules and it'll say, this email is spam or not spam, right? Does that make sense? An email comes in, I code in the rules, and then an output spam or not spam comes out based off of my rules that I hard-coded in. That is traditional software. Machine learning. What happens? Well, the machine learns the rules. So you are no longer exhaustively constructing a list of rules. The, the statistical algorithm learns it. So now, instead of just having my data, I have my data and the label. So for example, in the spam, not spam, I have my data that explains the email quantitatively, and I have either a one or zero attached to that as the label as either spam or not spam. I throw this entire thing into a statistical algorithm and it outputs its own rules. So then now when I have new data that does not have a one or a zero attached to it, never been seen before for the training step, this, this, these rules learned from my statistical algorithm can generalize to unseen examples and it will attach labels to that with a bound of confidence. Wow. Right? So the difference is typical software is, is based on deterministic rules here, but machine learning bases it off of statistics and uncertainty. And there are so many examples of machine learning in the world now that companies have been using to increase in efficiency because machine learning tasks can automate a lot of human things. And it makes it a lot more efficient and a lot quicker because you're having a computer do it rather than a dumbass human being, you know? So one of these examples, one that we will see next week, this is a nice primer. We will see how machine learning algorithms went into or currently always are a part of the disinformation age on Facebook, especially in terms of politics and voting and dividing and everything like that. And it's crazy. So... 
This is why every time I see people, especially nowadays with all the political mumbo jumbo going on, when you guys are posting memes about stuff and your only source of information is either Instagram or Facebook, you really have to scrutinize that information because it's so easy to doctor information these days and then we just take it as is, especially my generation. We go, oh wow, it looks like this person did this because I see it on this one Instagram page. Wow, I'm going to repost that because now I believe that that's true. You really cannot do that. Everything is biased and there's so much fake news. Pardon that term. I know my orange friend has really made that term saturated, but fake news is everywhere and it's a business and it's also a weapon of mass destruction. And we will see that next week when we talk about Cambridge Analytica. I digress, but machine learning, crazy technology, um, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, everybody, these huge companies use it the best because they have the most data. And the more data you have, the more accurate your models are. So every recommender system is tailored to just me. What have I clicked in the past? What is my behavior? They're even tracking mouse movements on your screen to predict what you like. So if, if when I'm scrolling through Instagram, I stop at a page or at a photo, perhaps an advertisement, they track how long I look at each photo. And then they will get similar ones to the ones that have captured my attention and they'll flood my timeline with those more often. This is stuff we don't think about unless you study this space and you learn it and you're a part of it. So like I said, most of this book is a waste of time because they go in depth into each algorithm. What he does is he picks and chooses each part from these different algorithms and he pieces them together into one master algorithm. Master algorithm that can learn anything given massive amounts of data along with their assumptions, then it can learn any task pretty much. He says he wants it to learn anything that can be learned. And the example that kind of threads this book together is learning a cure for cancer. And pretty much that, that means mapping out an entire network of how every cell interacts with each other but that's his claim. And at the very end, he's been doing this for so long. This guy's a UW professor. Go Cougs. Oh! And at the very, very end, he comes up, he, he lays it out. And I'm not going to pretend that I know half of what the hell he's talking about. I'm not going to because I don't. I'm going to have to read this again or a few more times in order to actually um, soak it all in. But he has this new thing that he is called alchemy. That is his version of the master algorithm, and he addresses it has many um, limitations to it, but it's a step forward and it combines, so this is a nice picture that he has that combines the, um, the best of the best from each algorithm. And I don't know if you can see here, but there is the optimization, the evaluation, and the representation. So the optimization is the method of searching for the best model that can depict the statistical patterns in your data. That is the optimization. Evaluation is the method of picking the best one that you have found in the optimization step, whether it be accuracy or uh, mean squared error. Oh, wow, what a turn. Finally, the representation is just kind of like the name of the algorithm. How is the optimization and evaluation done? So what's crazy is that there are these things called neural networks, which you've heard me talk about a little bit here before, but these neural networks are, have been created based on the way our neurons learn. So if I showed you a diagram, you would say, what the deuce? Actually, you know what? I'm going to draw one for you right now. All right, so here is what a neural network looks like. You have your input features. Then you have all this mathematical mumble jumbo, and this is my attempt at a sigmoid curve, and then here's your output. So this is like, in a sense, a, class of, a binary classification neural network. In here, the key thing to note is that the output and the input are both supplied at the time of training, and all of this gibberish is learned automatically from your algorithm. So output and input, the question and the answer are given, and then the logic behind the relationship between the output and the input is what's learned in this spider web of deuce. So Dr. Domingo's algorithm is quite intense, and I'm not going to try to sit here and articulate to you that I know what it's talking about. 
or try to tell you what it's about. I don't know. Point is, he believes that he's on track to finding an algorithm that can learn everything. The very end of the book, he talks about, wow, where is this going to bring us? And honestly, it sounds kind of intense where he's saying that everybody will have their own tailored model for them. So it's going to continuously learn based on our behavior and interactions, and it will continuously recommend to us the most likely or what it thinks is the best thing for us to do. Basically, have a computer run your life in a simulation. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't know if I'm about it because I actually really enjoy being a stupid-ass human being. It, spark it spices it up. Did I make a big mistake? Yeah, okay, cool. I'm human. That's fun. That's what makes it not boring. Does it screw with you? Yeah, so don't screw up too bad, but learn from other people's mistakes, you know? So, uh, this has been, been interesting. I know it's very quick, but I kind of like this better. It just encapsulates. It got the, the broad idea. The contest is still on for that, for that yellowing t-shirt there. It's not too bad. I can't smell it from here. So, um, you know, let me know. And I will uh, see you all next week.